Corporate profits are up, and we also learned today that unemployment is down in 27 states. Fourth quarter GDP was revised slightly upward to 3.1 percent, but consumer sentiment in the U.S. dropped more than forecasts as Americans worry about food and gasoline prices. Let's take a closer look now with Harvard economics professor Jeff Myron. He's a former research fellow at the National Bureau of Economic Research and is now a Cato Institute senior fellow as well. Jeff, thanks for joining us. A lot of sort of up arrow, down arrow, up arrow, down arrow. What does the U.S. economy look like to you here? Well, I think it looks as though the short to medium term things are in pretty good shape. We're not seeing the sort of dramatic uh, increases in GDP, the dramatic growth that we'd really like to see to get the unemployment rate down much faster. But basically things look as though they're relatively smooth, relatively stable. Yet there are various factors which might sort of generate significant bumps in the road. I think that in six months we're going to start to see inflation across sectors other than just food and energy. And the question then is really how the Fed reacts. If the Fed reacts, for, as I expect, pretty calmly, they at most raise interest rates a little bit or they continue with a relatively stable policy, I don't think that should be a huge concern. But there may be some political pressure on the Fed to respond a lot if inflation ticks up by more than a small amount. Is this, I mean, I was expecting you to say something about QE3 or finishing QE2, and you're saying raise interest rates a little bit? I mean, uh, don't you expect the Fed to continue being as accommodative? I guess that's kind of a code word for just pouring money into the system <laughs> as it has been. I think that what Bernanke would like to do is to continue to be extremely accommodative, and I think a strong majority of the FOMC probably agrees with him. But there are some dissenting voices, such as Charles Plosser, uh, one or two others. And I don't think the Fed can always do exactly what it wants with a, and just ignore the political process. The political process may put more weight on, more concern on inflation. If it just gets to one and a half, two percent, no, it won't be an issue. If it gets to three, four percent, then I think there's going to be a lot of clamoring from some parts of the political process to do something about it. So, but basically, Jeff, what you're saying is what the Fed has done, or uh, maybe the U.S. economy is on a, a, just a better footing because of a cycle right now, but things are going okay. The recovery is on a fairly steady footing, and you're not unhappy right. with uh, Fed policy here. No, I'm not. I mean, I, there are plenty of people who have concerns, and I think it's perfectly reasonable to say, there's stuff we don't know. Maybe the Fed shouldn't be as confident as it seems to be. Maybe the Fed is a little bit less confident behind closed doors, but it's putting a good face on things. There always are unexpected events. Inflation expectations in particular might sort of take off and acquire some inertia of their own. I think that's the big risk. But overall, I think that the Fed has been doing a very good job and the growth is consistent with that. So, so not, I mean, not a huge risk there. And it's interesting because I think of you as a libertarian, maybe not an Austrian, but we've just come through a period of historic uh, amounts of stimulus and historically uh, accommodative Fed policy. Doesn't that normally scare someone who's, who's a libertarian or concerned about big government intervention? Well, I think that people who have my views, libertarian sympathies, are concerned that central banks sometimes do contribute to volatility. They sometimes make mistakes, which make things worse rather than better, and that doing good monetary policy is much harder than it seems in the textbook. But the Fed is in a position where we had a horrible recession. Okay? The markets clearly expected the Fed to do something, and what they did was was pretty much what mainstream economists would all have expected them to do. And so I think that calmness, that reassurance was sensible. Now is not the time for them to say we're going to kind of close up shop, turn off the lights and send everybody home and not have a central bank. Okay? If things were really calm, then we can have a discussion about, you know, should central banks operate in a somewhat different way going forward. But I don't think there's good grounds to be particularly critical of the recent Fed behavior. I think they've done a, uh, you know, it's Monday morning quarterbacking is always much easier, but so far it looks as though they did okay. What, what about the budget right now? I mean, what should Congress, what should the president be doing here? We're going to talk to Christy Romer in a little bit about right. uh, a letter that she signed with a, a group of ex chairs of the Council of Economic Advisors saying it's time to really cut back on not just the fat, but the meat in the budget because the deficit. It's a real concern. Do you agree? I totally agree. And uh, I think that 
a huge fraction of economists are in broad agreement with that statement that was signed by those 10 CEA chairs. When you get to the details, it gets somewhat harder because you first have to talk about, well, do we raise taxes to reduce the deficit or do we cut spending? Economists are generally skeptical that we can do that much of the adjustment by raising taxes because if we raise taxes a lot, we slow the economy. But if you start to then talk about where should we cut spending, then it gets really hard because most of the action is in Medicare and Medicaid. If you don't do something major about those two programs, you probably haven't made much difference to the long-term budget situation. But of course, there's no political will from Democrats or Republicans to cut Medicare. That's a huge problem, and there's no obvious solution to that. All right, hey, Jeff. It's a political Jeff, problem. It, it, it is, and it's one that we're going to focus on in the program. Always a pleasure to get some time with you. Thanks so much for stopping by Harvard economics uh, professor Jeff Meyer. In there.